It's okay to file for Social Security early, you know. It's okay. No one's going to sit there and yell at you. I've had a couple, I've had a number of people through my course of my uh, career who feel almost um, guilty for telling me they're going to file early. And I said, we crunched the numbers. But I've had three straight people back to back to back, back to back to back, talk, where it made sense for them to file Social Security early. I'm going to share with you how these cases went. All right. So the first guys talked to, he, they were up in Michigan. He was about six years younger than his wife. Yeah, I think six years. Oh, my goodness, guy. Finney is. You are one loud dog. Liam, you going to let him in? Hold on a second. Lily, you want to let, let him in? Thanks, buddy. Finney was wrestling with a neighbor's dog. It was a big uh, chocolate lab named Charlie who got about 40 pounds on Finney. Finney's 80 pounds of nothing but muscle. And they're just wrestling and playing. And Finney's so flipping graceful when he's flying around. And here comes Pablo. He's like, play with me, play with me. And they're both like, hey, half pint. <laughs> All right, anyway, so in this case, let's just say my man, um, he's 62. All right, he's going to file early. I'm just using this for example. So let's say his PIA is 3000 a month. All right. His wife has no record of her own, no Social Security. So she will not get any spousal benefit until he files. So, I mean, and until he files, she's getting nothing, even though she's six years older than him. I want to say five years. We'll just say six. I can't remember. Let's say his PIA is 3000 but if he files at 62, he won't get 3,000. He'll get, we'll just say simplicity, 2,000. That's nice round. It won't be reduced that much, but just hear me out. My nice, simple caveman brain. So his PIA is 3,000. His benefit when he files at 62 will be 2,000. What will her benefit be? You, I've already told you all you need to know here. I've already told you. Her benefit will be? 1500 because it'll be half of his PIA is contingent on when she files but because she's already above 67 we know for a fact she's above her full retirement age thus she will get 1500 bucks as half of his PIA it has nothing to do with when he files it only has to do with when she files and because she's filing beyond her FRA she will get half of his PIA. So she'll get half of 3,000, 1,500, and he'll get a reduced benefit because he's filing at 62. So they'll get $3,500 a month from 62 until 67. That'd be 42,000 a year times five. That's about 215,000 bucks. Now, if he would have waited till 67, she would have got nothing and he would have got nothing. Now he'll get 3,000 a month and she'll still get $1,500 a month, half of his PIA. So they just get an extra $1,000 a month by waiting an extra five years. All right. Now, the, the problem that we have here, because 62 to 67, it's full retirement age is 67. So an extra $1,000 a month, they got $3,500 a month by him filing early. And if they would have waited, they would have got $4,500 a month. His PIA plus her spousal benefit, which is half of his PIA. All right, part so you can see it's going to take, I mean, we can do the calculator. If he's going to get for simplicity, uh, 12,000 is going to, hold on, so I'll tell you. So remember, they got 42,000 a year from 62 till 67 for five years. They got $210,000 they would not have received if he waited till his full retirement age. All right, now at his full retirement age, they would have got forty-five hundred bucks a month, or that's uh, fifty-four thousand years. So it's an extra thousand dollars a month, or twelve thousand a year. So divide by twelve thousand a year, it would take another seventeen years for them to break even relative to his filing early. All right. So now we fast forward till sixty-seven. She's seventy-three. It would take until she's 90 for them to break even. It doesn't make any sense to do that. Man. No sense whatsoever. All right. So in that case, it's a slam dunk. I had two people just like that. The other guy was, um, 
The other guy was actually older. The other guy in this other case was 71. His wife is 59. He's already on Social Security. He's already getting the max. And I said to the wife, file at 62. It makes no sense not to. Yes, it will be reduced spousal benefit. It will be based on his PIA. Now, again, he waited till he was 70 to get the full delayed earnings credits. I'm just for simplicity, I'm going to say his PIA is 3000 a month. But because he waited till he's 70, he's going to get 4000 a month. All right. She's not going to get half of the 3000 a month because she's going to file her spousal benefit at 62. Uh, so she'll get, we'll just say 1000 a month, just for simplicity. All right. So she's going to be reduced by $500 a month because she'll get half of his PIA minus the reduction because she filed before her own full retirement age. Hope that makes sense. The issue here, though, is the husband is 12 years older. So she'll get a reduced benefit. But again, we got to factor in how long is the husband going to live? Well, we don't know. But on top of that, when the husband croaks, as he certainly will before she, most likely, she will lose her spousal benefit and go right on to the survivor benefit, which won't be reduced. There's no reduction in survivor benefit as long as you take it beyond your full retirement age. So it completely makes sense for both of them to file or for her to file early. So she's younger, file early because she's basically going to get that spousal benefit, which will be gone when the husband dies. And the third case, oh man, I'm trying to think what it was. Hold on a second, let me think this. And I can't remember what the third one is. I'm looking, I just can't remember. But I think it, I could have sworn the husband was, early, was born. I forgot. Anyway, so here's two examples. Wife is younger, significantly. Wife is older, significantly. In both cases, the wife had less, if any, of their own benefit. It completely makes sense to file early for these in this case. All right, now, the second case, the husband didn't, he filed that his delayed earnings credits at 70, which is what I plan on doing. All right, so Charlotte is four years younger than me. My anticipation is I'll either file at 67, my full retirement age, and she'll file at 60. I guess she'll be 63 for her spousal benefit, which will be reduced. My anticipation, I hope, is to file when I'm 70, 18 years from now. So I'll get a max benefit. And then when I die, she'll get a max benefit off of my, uh, her survivor benefit off of me. But we might not. We might file at 63 and 67. That way she'll get a, a spousal benefit, which would be half of my benefit, but it will be reduced. Yeah, that's probably where we'll go. Maybe that was the other case. Yeah, I think it was. I think the other case was the guy was going to wait till his full retirement age, or this is not his full retirement age. That's what it was. The guy was going to wait until he was, um, it was four. Yeah, exactly. That was what it was. I can't remember who it was, but I remember something just like me, four years older than his wife. And he wanted to wait till 70 for delayed earnings credits. So I said, nah, just go ahead and file. Um, it, it, I think it was that even, I think it was a year before his full retirement age. I uh, said, so that way you're pulling your wife in to get a, a spousal benefit as well. I mean, it's going to be reduced for both of you guys a little bit, but same kind of scenario here. You're like, dude, I'm going to get, uh, instead of 3000 a month, he was going to get $2,750, something like that. And then she would get, uh, instead of a $1,500 a month of spousal benefit, she would have got uh, 1000 a month. So they're going to get 3750 between them. And then you just figure out how long does it take to break even on that? Thirty-seven fifty between them. That's uh, forty-two thousand. Actually, what is that? Forty. Thirty-seven fifty a month. Thirty-seven fifty times twelve. That's forty-five thousand a year. If they would have waited just one year, uh, he would have got three thousand, and she would have got. Uh, we'll just say eleven fifty. They would have got an extra times twelve. Um, they would have got an extra 2,800 bucks. I mean, that's, you know, 200 bucks a month, just not that huge of an issue. Now, if he would have waited till he was 70, all right, 70, he would have got significantly more. She, he would have got, uh, 4,000 a month. Now she still would have only got, uh, 1,500. So that's $5,500 a month. That's 5,500, 66,000 a year. Uh, ah, I'm screwing up here. 5,500 times 12, 66,000 a year. So they would have got instead of about twenty one thousand more, because thirty so sixty six thousand years what they would have got if he would have waited until he's seventy, which is four more years, four more years for Biden, or else they would have got thirty seven fifty times twelve, forty five. They'd be twenty two thousand a year more. All right. So in this case, because they're getting forty five thousand for four years. 
times four. They would have got 180,000 more in the first four years where if they would have waited, they weren't getting anything. Yeah. So you divide that by 22,000. And here you're looking at only eight years to break even, which makes sense. And that's exactly what it is, about 78 to 80 or so. I mean, that, I, that seems more reasonable to me to say, go ahead and take Social Security later. But, you know, it, it really depends on your health, what else your other assets are and stuff. But and these are at least two cases to take Social Security early, without question. And it's okay to do it. All right, love your thoughts. We'll see you.